Hey you guys, welcome to Wednesdays with Springfield Leather. I am not alone today. We've got Clayton over here. We are running just slightly behind today, if you couldn't tell. Um, yeah, but we're just doing a needle change real quick. Hold on. Yeah, we're getting our class 20 set up so that we can sew these aprons perfectly, ideally. So in any case, so how's everybody doing today? It's another lovely week here in the Ozarks. We're getting 70 degree weather back here, so we're really enjoying that. Hopefully everybody else has kind of thawed out and spring is starting to, to come around to the rest of the world as well. Um, we're gonna make some aprons today. So we've got um, our new apron pattern pack that we released, I think last year we, we got this out. And um, so we've got the pattern pack for the full half and the split apron. So today we're gonna be doing two of them. We're gonna be making the full apron and then the half apron. And then you guys can figure out the split apron on your own. We'll just leave that to you. But while Clayton finishes up over here, I actually, oh, he's here. Yeah. With a whole new face this week, guys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, so first of all, just before we get started here, um, Rusty and Kevin had bought um, a bunch of really cool exotic scraps here a couple weeks ago, and we've been going through all of them. And so we have these three pieces of, I, I believe it's American alligator flank. Um, so I know that we've had those little flanks that we've been selling for a while, but these are nice and large, still pretty thin, still pretty thin, but they've got a, a nice big texture to them. Yeah, those are pretty big. Um, you could probably almost maybe piece out a belt a little bit if you did a couple sections. Oh, you could at least some nice billets or something. And some of them are yeah. even big enough you could get a wallet back out of. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we've got just three of these in this awesome kind of cognac color. Um, they'll be available during the video. They're $40 a piece. So the first three people to email Anthony at springfieldleather.com. Anthony at springfieldleather.com that you want one um, We will get your information and we'll go from there. So if you want one of these they're 40 bucks I only have three the first three people Anthony at springfieldleather.com and you can take advantage of, of one of these cool guys. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah, those are sweet Okay well, Clayton, let's get started. Okay. Which one do we want to do first? Uh, so let's go ahead and tackle the full apron just okay. in case we don't end up having enough time to get to the half apron. It's a little bit simpler. Really, these are super simple projects. Like she said, we came out with these patterns last year and uh, we've actually done done pretty well. We've sold quite a few of them and, and had some positive feedback. Um, we really simplified it as much as we could. Really, my biggest struggle in making a pattern is figuring out the sizing. Right. 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 I mean, figuring out what you need to go on your apron isn't too bad um, because that's really heavily dependent on the tools and the use you know you're going to get out of it. But the sizing is always where I what I can't yeah. figure out. So we've got if you buy if you buy the pattern pack, you will receive a really big piece of paper that's got. A pattern that you will cut out. So I know that's a little bright for you guys to see. Um, this pattern has three different sizes. So the largest size that you cut out will be your your large and extra large. Nope, extra large and two X. Um, and then you've got this red line that runs around the perimeter that is your medium and your large. And then you've got your blue line that's your extra small and your small. And so what I did, because I don't want to like cut my pattern up into pieces that I can't use later, right? right? Is I just folded it at those lines. So this this particular pattern was really easy to fold. Just I just folded down the lines to the size that I wanted. And today we are going to make the medium large size. Um, so I just went around the perimeter, I folded it down. If I ever want to make it extra large, I can just unfold it and go from there. Yep. Um, this pattern also contains inside it um, the pattern for the half apron. And so what I did on that one is I just folded it in half where that line is, and now I don't have to cut it apart. I just made my fold, made my outline, and now everything is still full. So just a little, you know, don't cut up your patterns if you don't have to, because that makes them difficult to use later. So. She's so smart. I totally would have cut it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, like you said, we've got the medium large size cut out here, which is yeah. kind of the in-between. We figured it'd work pretty well. And today for our leather, we're using one of our new um, cowboy leathers. So we just brought on, um, we know that you guys love that copper cowboy that we've been carrying mm -hmm. for a couple of years. It's one of our most popular oil tans. Just got a like amazing distressed look to it, a really great pull up. So we have brought this on in like five more colors. Yeah, quite a bit. It's at least five. I'm actually not 100% sure how many, but how many today, do you know? 
red or this red color, like an oxblood, a tangerine, vintage outlaw, I think is what we're naming Ooh. one. And then, and then the normal copper cowboy, so that'd be five. Well, and then this is steel. Yeah. Oh, that that's six. And then there was another one that was going to be like charcoal, but the color variants were just too wide. Okay. And I have like 20 sides of them over there. So it'll be another What's Up Wednesday. Probably next week. Or what's up Wednesday this week nice. is, okay. is up on the website, actually. Nice. So we we chose the steel today, which actually, it's kind of like a gray-green, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It's got a little bit of a green tint to it, yeah. for sure. But it's really awesome, so we're going to accent it with some nice brown oil tan here and some solid brass hardware. Yep. So, okay. You ready to get started? I'm, I'm going to be making this today. Yeah, she's, she's going to make help. it, right? And so I'm going to do my best to walk her through it. We'll see how okay. this goes. Uh, so we already got our parts cut out, yeah. right? So for the full apron, uh, leather-wise, you're going to need uh, two strips. These are each, I think, 30 inches long for okay. the medium-large. Um, these are extra strips she cut out just for a little bit of pocket okay. detail. She's going to cap on the, pocket. the edge, right? Yep. We've got your front pocket, your main body of the apron, uh, four tabs, and then a hammer loop, which I cut out a piece of veg tan just so it would be a little bit stiffer. Um, so yeah, not a lot going on here. Hardware, we got four one-inch D-rings, two one-inch uh, slides, and one one-inch clasp, uh, just for the waist strap. Yep. So that's it. Let's get through it. Awesome. So on the pattern that you cut out, um, all the way around it. Number one, there are markings. You get uh, an overhead shot. There you go. There we go. So there's markings on the pattern for the top pocket placement right here, as well as the pockets that go down below. And then your tabs. You can see in gray, you have the tab placement. Yeah, two tabs up here and then on the body. Correct. This yeah. would be the for the full apron, I believe, right here, here, okay. there, and there. And then the half apron. Okay. All right. That's really all there is. And then we'll sew on some pockets. And once again, just like with the chaps that Denny and I did uh, a couple weeks ago, you can kind of jazz this up as much as you'd like. So depending on the different elements that, you know, you want to add or if you're making them for a very specific purpose, um, say maybe you're making an apron for a hairstylist or a barber or something like that, and they want some, you know, specific little pockets here or there. This is just kind of your base plan, and you can jazz it up from there. You remember Chance that was over in our automated packaging? I do. Mm -hmm. He just sent me an email. He's like, so... He went to barber school and he's like, hey, can you I make use it for barber? And I was like, I bet we can fix you up. So I hate a chance out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first thing you're going to do is go ahead and mark your pocket placement, Liz. Okay. How do you want to go about that? So let's see here. So I'll probably measure oh, on, a I do have a square, but I will take your little silver marking pen. There you go. I got it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to measure from the top of the apron down to where it tells me I should put it on, so it's kind of a strange measurement. We're at like nine and five eighths. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So nine and five eighths, and then we'll center it. From the top, nine and five eighths at the bottom. Once again, just a little silver marking pin. Sorry if my head was in the way. Just gonna mark the bottom. Uh, yeah. Do we have a center finding? No. No, we got a thirty-six inch ruler. That's okay. I think it just goes. Where's my pocket? Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. So we're here. And then. There you go. Sorry, guys. Let's see. We've got one and a half ish. Yeah, I'll just eyeball it. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be great. And I like that. So. I'm just going to mark my corners where I sew it. And just line those up. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and mark the spots for, for the lower pockets on the full apron. So since you're doing two individual lower pockets, uh, do one on each side. Okay. Uh, um, so on this one, we are three inches from the bottom. So I'll just kind of eyeball it again. These little silver marking pins are really easy to lose. They're quite small. Three inches there, and then how far over from the side? Two and five eighths. We really like that two and five eighths. Oh, where did I measure it? Actually, maybe I'll just measure it the corner. I go from the bottom corner. Two and, two three, quarters. and three quarters. A 
look, they don't even know that I dropped right. it. It's fine. So while you're marking those, I'm going to go ahead and start laying down the basing tape on the pat on the paper pattern everywhere in yellow that's outlined. Let's see where is this? Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. So on the paper pattern, all of these yellow marks around the edges are actually your basting tape lines. So you can just take a look at the pattern. It's a nice visual cue to let you know what you need to tape and where. So since we're doing the two outside individual pockets uh, towards the bottom of the apron, I'm gonna go ahead and tape the three edges. But you've got that handy pocket detail at the top, don't you? So we're gonna I need do. you to sew that on first. Yes, we need to sew this on. And then one pocket. So should, since she wants to cap the edges on these pockets to make them look a little bit fancier, I'm gonna go ahead and put the basting tape on these. Okay. That corner. That corner. All right. So Joshua's got a comment or a question. So it's got to be pretty amazing to be able to walk the shop and pick out everything needed without having to order it. <laughs> I always order the wrong stuff. <laughs> I know. I think that we probably take that for granted for sure. Yes. And it's pretty nice because we, we find leather under our tables and we find hardware and little organizers or we just go out to the retail floor and just grab what we need. So we're definitely spoiled in that aspect. We cannot deny that. <laughs> definitely right. It's, it is nice. If we come up short on a little bit of leather, usually we can find more. But I will say, because we live in leather, we don't smell it any longer. So, you know, that... That's really the only minus to working here is that we no longer smell leather. I think I went on vacation for what is it, three weeks last year when I went to Disney and I still couldn't smell it when I came back. It's just gone. All right, so before we stick these, I'm going to measure just under half of the width of these binding strips. I can't get that off. And I'm going to go ahead and mark a straight line across the top of this pocket. And that's going to be our guide for laying down our strip. That way we make sure that there's a little bit more hanging over the back than the front. Because you want to catch that edge, right? Exactly. That way we make sure we catch it on the back and make sure it's straight across the front. I will tell you, depending on the leather that you're using, be careful with the basting tape because sometimes if, um, it can pull the finish off of the leather. So you want to kind of make sure that you're putting it where it belongs or don't kind of just lay it randomly on your project. Okay. Nice capped pockets there. Yep. All right, so we used our 3 8 spacing tape on those because we just wanted to stick them all the way down. So, Liz, do you want to go ahead and stitch those across so that we can then yeah, tape them down? Done. Yeah, go ahead. So what you, do you have me thread that machine with? Um, This is... Uh, so we decided to use the Class 20. Yeah, our yeah. Cobra Class 20 out so of our sewing room. This is a 138... Whatever this green color is, I actually am not 100% sure what it's called, but it looks really nice with the leather. And guys, I haven't really sewed in a while, so we're going to see if I remember how to do this. Okay, can I use your... Yeah, thanks. Do some wing dividers to mark your stitch line. The guys in the shop make fun of me for marking my stitch lines all the time, but that's how my stitches come out straight, I gotta say. Does our instructions say what the width of all the aprons are? Uh, I don't believe it lists the overall dimensions for the width. Not that I recall. This one, what, what size are we doing? This is the medium large size. So if you want me to go ahead and give you an idea. The, the base of the apron measures 26 inches. Uh, up at the top for it, before it tapers to the neck, it's 24. How about if we were doing the extra large? If we can just... Extra large should extend it by, I believe, two, probably one inch. So at the base, we're probably looking at 27 inches. So the extra large 
total width at the bottom is 27. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. And then it's going to be just a little bit longer as well, about an inch longer okay. at the bottom. Oh, How's it going, Liz? Yeah. No, I got it. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Good. All right, so while you're doing that, we forgot to mark the placement of our tabs on the apron, so I'm going to go ahead and get those marked. Just like we did the pockets. I'm just going to measure over and see where they were supposed to be placed. You know what? I could have just set up the roller edge guy. Really got to make sure that that stitch is finished, otherwise you get two threads at the bottom. Oh, it's like I still know what I'm doing. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> These stips are terrible. All right, so I marked the position of the tabs for us. Okay. So just to show you guys on the, the pocket patterns, so we're doing style B technically. So on the lower pockets, we cut two, which are the ones that she just showed, sewed the cap on. And then uh, this is the top pocket, which is our brown oil tan pocket. We cut one. So while she was sewing, I got a quarter inch basing tape around three sides of the top pocket. And we're gonna go ahead and start sticking our pockets down to the body of our apron. Those quick snips. Uh, where's your little tape? There you go. Alright, so this will be our top pocket. Line up the corner she marked. We're just going to cover her marks. There we go. Bring our wing dividers back. I did. Well, right over there. All the way over there. On the table. Okay, you got long arms. Go ahead and mark your stitch line. You guys sure are quiet today. All right. Is there anybody out there? All right, so Piper's got a question. What is this? Could Pipe you? Wrench. Pipe wrench. Piper, whatever. Could you see it? Could you see it on a class four? If yes, needle and thread recommended. Could you sew it? Yeah, I'm guessing that should be. Could you sew it? We'll Thanks, Tony. Copy. Yeah. Sorry, I just copy and pasted. I didn't fix any typo. No, oh, you're fine. Um, you could sew it on a class four. It'd be a little more challenging, uh, especially once we start navigating this large kind of floppy apron around. You could do it. I've done projects like that on a heavy stitcher. Um, I would probably use 138, uh, maybe a 69 bobbin. Uh, you could do 138 top and bobbin though, and probably a size 21 needle. Uh, so pretty lightweight since this is thinner leather. And if you're doing a real thick like welding apron, you could probably do 207 even. Yeah. All right, and you got that taped up. I do. All right, do this one. Oh, thanks. Yep. Didn't didn't cut and burn my threads for me. No. This is my project, guys. <laughs> Why are these snips the worst snips? <laughs> there we go. All right. Yeah, we ended up choosing the Cobra Class 20 for this. The flatbeds are just really nice to be able to maneuver these larger pieces. Like this apron body is gonna be much easier to 
to a workaround if you've got a bit of a table to lay it out on. And really, depending on the leather that you're using, the class four could kind of be overkill a little bit. It could be. It'll take a little bit of dialing in. Yeah. Uh, definitely have to adjust your tension. And... One on there. Ooh. So one detail you don't want to miss whenever you're laying down your, your side pockets in the instructions, it calls for a loop, a small loop to be placed Yay. on the side. Almost missed that, didn't we? Yep. Yeah. And so, like I said, I cut this one out of just a piece of Herman Oak veg tan. I wanted something a little bit stiffer that would kind of hold its shape outwards. Uh, I went ahead and skived one in. You could, you could sand that to a taper, but the instructions call for it to go under the edge of the pocket and come out to the edge of the apron. So I'm gonna kind of train this a little bit so it doesn't just immediately pop off once I tape it down. Piece of tape. And I'll shoot some quarter inch spacing tape right on the edge. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lift the corner of this pocket right here and just place it right underneath. Just like that. And so once we, we'll sew the perimeter and catch one side of it, and then the other side, you'll just stitch down right at the edge of the apron. Just like okay, that. so then loop around. Oh. Screw that way. There Thank we go. you. Our stage manager giving us directions. <laughs> Do you want to show them again? Yeah, so hammer loop just goes right underneath the pocket. I use quarter inch spacing tape just to stick it down there. And then we're going to stitch around the perimeter of this pocket, which will secure this side. And then we'll just pull this up and stitch that edge right there. There we go. Pocket's right. on. So I think you're ready to go back to the sewing machine. If oh. you like, we can go ahead and set mark your, our line. Mark your line. See if Liz can follow a straight line. It'll probably be okay. Go ahead. So one thing I would do, I like. If I wear an apron and I've got that top chest pocket, I'll usually carry a pen or a Sharpie up there. Oh, yeah. So we could draw a little dividing line, and I think that's one of the options on the patterns. I think it is. So we'll just divide out, we'll just eyeball it, maybe a couple and inches. I think, yeah. So we've got top pocket pattern here. It does have a little stitch line if you wanted to do an extra like little pen spot instead of just one big open. There, there we go. go. All right, you've got some work to do. Wyman says, "What would be your what would be your everyday go-to in leather to make heavy-duty belts?" Well, we do have an everyday go-to. Uh, that's usually Herman Oak leather. Herman Oak's got some really good rigidity and grain density that makes really great uh, conceal and carry belts. That's usually what we use it for. Uh, we'll also do single ply uh, belts out of their eight to ten ounce or nine to ten ounce uh, veg. We carry the drum dyed black and brown collar, which is. Kind of our most popular, I guess, for belts. So. Yeah. So that's probably my everyday go-to. Of course, if you're making a two-ply belt, I'll usually back, and I'm wanting a heavier duty belt, I'll usually back it with some, at least a six to seven ounce veg tan. And that can be, you know, any double shoulders or uh, import sides. Doesn't have to be Herman Oak. Herman Oak just adds a little more rigidity. Hardware ready. I think we found the one thing I can't talk and do at the same time. <laughs> the one thing. <laughs> the one. Oh. Oh. I bet you could do. What was the last time you sewed? 
You, you've sewn. Um, I made curtain on my home sewing machine a few years ago. <laughs> a few years ago. A few years ago. Yeah, it's it's been a while. You pretty much do it by hand mostly these days, don't you? I do. So we kind of had a question, Clayton, and I found a little more information. The question was, is how do you tell what size the thread is? And I said, well, it just should say on the spool. But right. he has some that's rolled around a, a cardboard tube, and he's not sure what size it is. Is there any way to really tell what size the thread is? Uh, it's, it's pretty challenging. Um, so I've got a thread sizing chart hanging up by my desk, and you can find it online, and it relates all of the, the different ways that they size thread, right? And so the best way to go about it would probably be get a pair of calipers, a digital calipers, and be able to measure it the best he can without just squishing it flat. Um, and then just relate it to that size chart. If you can figure out, you know, how many millimeters in diameter it is, you should be able to relate it pretty close to a, an average thread size. Razor Blades has a question for you, Liz, while you sew. Do you stock kangaroo leather? We, we do stock kangaroo leather. Um, um, we carry from the, the same place that we get um, all of our kangaroo lace from. So if you, you know, have a project that you want to match in the kangaroo lace, or that's just a good color chart example. Um, we do carry it, or we can special order. Like we, I think we usually stock like the black and the browns um, and some of like the most popular colors in the in the lace. On hand, we'll try to keep it on hand. It's not the cheapest thing. I think it runs around $16 per square foot. We do not cut the skin, so usually you're looking at somewhere in like the $150 to $200 range per skin. This is awkward. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Find my thread. It's really important to hold your thread so that your stitch comes out well, but it's also really difficult when your project is awkward. Okay. I'll see how this goes. Yeah, I believe it's a it's a regular stock item, at least for the color that we normally keep in stock. So if you go to our website and type in kangaroo, you should you should get those skins that we offer. Razor Blades was impressed with you, Liz, because he remembered a backstitch when we had Denny over here the other time, the other day. They're like, oh, he forgot to backstitch it. <laughs> Some things you just shouldn't forget with sewing. <laughs> yes. Especially with pockets, because you have a lot of, like, I went over this section twice, you know, I started a few stitches in, I go back, and then I come forward. Um, and then on this side, I think I'll go over it three times, just because that's where all your your tension is whenever you're putting things in and out, things are going to be hanging on that. So you want to make sure that your stitch is locked. Tony, if you want to give me an overhead shot while she's finishing up sewing, unless we're just enamored <laughs> what she's doing here. Skills. John Gatlin, can you please upsize the apron pattern for larger person? What weight leather are you using? Uh, so upsizing the pattern, you can basically scale it in width and length. It's really not too bad. Um, that's kind of how we did our small, medium, and large sizes, or extra large slash 2X. Um, if you needed to go even bigger, it really wouldn't be too bad to add a little bit of extra length or width to it. The top, the top portion of the apron uh, with the, the curves that, that kind of go under the arms, Really don't change a whole lot um, whenever scaling the apron. So that's not too bad. And as far as what weight of leather we're using, I believe this is a four to five ounce oil tan. I think so. Um, and then we're kind of doing the same thing for the straps, just a four to five ounce brown oil tan. And that usually works pretty well. There's a couple pieces, like the, the pieces that we cap the pockets with, we did skive down to a, to about two ounce. Um, but that's, not, that's purely for aesthetics. 
All right, we'll trust, we'll trust that Liz can fill that up and we'll see what you're doing. I'm getting to the hard part. This is one, oh, two, three, four, five, five layers of leather here. Let's see if you can mess it up. Step up on it without sliding that veg piece out. I've already got the veg piece locked in. We're just gonna walk this one. I'm just gonna hand walk it. <laughs> We're just walking. We're taking a walk. It says, let me rephrase. What is the thinnest weight offered for use as a summertime lightweight apron, for example? You can, whatever you want. You can, yeah. So typically the thinnest leather we offer is is two to three ounce for most. We do sell a few leathers at like a, a advertised at a one and a half to two ounce, such as our pig skins. Um, I've made aprons out of like lamb skin before, which are really lightweight and flexible. Um, and those are gonna be in your ounce and a half, two ounce range. That's probably about the thinnest I would go. Any thinner than that, and it's probably gonna tear. What about some of that waxed canvas we have? Mm -hmm. Waxed canvas would make a great apron. Uh, we've done some out of those. That's not necessarily a light summer weight apron. The waxed canvas is it's pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty heavy duty, but it does repel moisture really well. That would definitely be a good choice. Some of the, the lightweight colored canvas might be a good option. Yeah. Okay. You guys can look at Clayton now. Okay. Oh. So while she was doing that, or she's cl clipping and burning threads, we can go ahead and start assembling the straps that go with these. So since we're doing the medium large, the neck strap and the waist strap actually turn out to be the same length, uh, which is fine. And I think they are, yeah, about 30 inches long. So these straps are both assembled pretty much the same way, uh, only with one component missing, and that's the clasp for the waist, waist strap. Uh, the neck strap just goes around to the two D-rings. So I like to fully assemble the straps before I attach them to the apron. But helps minimize the amount of clutter you've got to maneuver around the sewing machine when, when trying to stitch them. So I'm going to peel my 3 8 piece of basing tape I put at the end. And the first one we're just going to pass right through the center. We're going to go right through the slide and just fold right over the center bar. All right? Let's stick it down on the other side. And whenever we're sticking it down, we want to make sure that we have enough of a tab here outside of this slide to where we'll be able to catch it with the sewing machine. Let's stick that down right there. And so Liz will stitch that for us here in just a minute. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with the other one. the center bar of the slide. Remember that Friends episode where they're trying to move the couch up the stairs? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so at this point we'll go ahead and need to get these slides stitched on before we go any further with the straps. I did get tape on all four of the tabs. So all four of these tabs will essentially pass through these D-rings and get stitched onto the apron. It'll just sandwich right over the edge of the apron and stitch right on. Well, this is almost there. I'm almost, I got this line in my little pin line. Anybody else have any other questions for us? Come on now. <laughs> Can't just stand up here and make things up like I do all every other week. Yeah, don't make us do all the work here. What are you guys doing? So, a common one of the common questions about aprons that I get is what leather is going to be best for a welding apron. Those are those are pretty popular. Everybody usually knows a welder, and uh, most of them, once they find out you do leather work, will ask you for an apron, right? So we do sell some pearl grain mule splits. Those are really popular for welding aprons. It's kind of this whitish, bluish color, heavy duty uh, split that have traditionally been used for welding aprons, welding chaps, that kind of thing to keep any of that hot slag off you. Um, other than that, you can use a full grain oil tan. Um, I usually don't recommend going much heavier than oh, six, seven ounce would be a pretty heavy duty oil tan apron, I feel like. 
and that would work fine. What's nice about the pearl grain mule splits is that they're they're pretty cost effective and pretty good size. And it does take quite a bit of leather to do an apron. Um, let's see what we have recommended as far as how much leather it takes to do this one. So for the, the full apron, uh, we're recommending 10 to 11 square feet, and that would include doing your main body tabs and straps, tabs and straps out of all the same leather. Um, so that's a pretty good chunk of material. You know, you're looking at pretty close to half a side right there. Even the half apron takes seven to eight square feet. Richard said suede for a welding. Mm -hmm. Welding apron. Yeah, that's essentially what the, the, the mule splits are. It's a suede, a suede piece. It's suedes are, are splits. Okay. Cutting to do, but we can do that later. Oh, nice. Bridget's got a question for us. Bridget, she's over in our receiving department. So sweet of her. <laughs> uh, do you think that the cork leather, it's not really leather, but uh, would suffice if making an apron, would suffice if making an apron, or would it be too thin? Um, so it would work. You could make an apron out of it. Uh, if you ever look at the cork that's that's commonly sold, there's about, uh, you know, a quarter of a millimeter of actual cork and then the rest is fabric. Um, so it would make a decent lightweight apron. It doesn't tear really easily with the fabric backing. Um, I, don't, I haven't really done a lot of durability testing with it though. Yeah. That's, that might be my only thing is if you're bending and folding and that. All right. So it just it holds up. It, okay. It, it would definitely be neat looking to begin with, though. And maybe for your vegan friends, it would be acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Ooh, we don't talk about those people here. Oh, did I, was I supposed to sew that down? Yeah, so you can go ahead and sew this down, or we can rivet it and be your choice. Why don't we rivet it you and have rivet some it? fun with that? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So the pattern or instructions don't necessarily call for any rivets. Uh, this whole thing is actually sewn together. But we brought some rivets over. It, we thought it'd make kind of a nice little addition to our solid brass hardware that we're using. So I grabbed some of the half inch number 12 brass rivets, the burn washer style. So these lovely, these lovely fellas. Yep. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and do we have a hole punch for you? You said that there was a rotary punch. There you go. How about while you're doing that? You want me to sew those straps for you? Sure, that sounds lovely. All right, that's very good. But... <laughs> Just pull right at the edge. So quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing about that rotary plant, it's not really sharp. Yeah. It's more of more looks. Terrible. Don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> if there's a reason it's hanging in the studio. Right. Not in the shop. There we go. That one. That one worked. Kind of. Oh, I can see it's played in the same. Great job, please. Yeah. So I'm just doing a couple of horizontal lines across this. So here are those slides. If you want, you can do a, you know, a box with an X stitch. It's not too critical. Should I put the, the burr on the back side or on the front side? What's that? Oh, I'd put it on the front. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't catch. Yep, just in case you got a little bit of a, a snag on your burr once you've seen it over. A burr on my burr? A little bit of a burr on the burr, yeah. Don't want it to catch any clothing.
Pony, have we sold any of these flanks yet? Uh, we've sold one. All right. He wants to add more to our order, so we'll get him. Okay. We'll get him in contact with you after you get done with the video. Yep. So for people that are, are joining us or didn't know about him, we've got these these three American. We got one left. Oh, we've got one left. No, I mean, sorry, we got one sold. We got two left. Oh, yeah. So we've got two American flanks left. American alligator here. American. Anyways, so awesome cognac color. You could easily kind of piece together a belt or at least some billets or something if you wanted to. Otherwise, it'd make like a nice minimalist wallet. Forty bucks. We've got two of them. Email anthony at springfieldleather.com. Anthony at springfieldleather.com. $40 American Alligator Flink. All right. I'll give you my lighter. Um, it, I didn't know it was. A lighter. It's a lighter. It was on the machine. Scott said we should strop the... We should strop the um, hole punch, but I don't think it's going to hit that every punch. <laughs> You'll think it can help. It's gonna need more of the stropping. Yeah, usually if I'm if I'm gonna buff uh, any of my round punches, we've got a, a buffing wheel, basically a, a soft cloth wheel and a bench grinder in the shop that we run some jewelers rouge on. Does sure. a pretty good at buffing those. Oh, Clayton, I might need you for that. No, you're good. Jeez. See if you wouldn't stop working out. I know. Lots of love. Not even moving. Not talk too much trash until I do it. <laughs> I need. Where, why don't you bring the big? Aww. Oh. Oh. There you go. Thanks. I started it for him. <laughs> All right. There you go. Yeah, that's good. That's better. That's Turn around so you can see it. Oh, so we got a little rivet. Awesome. So I go. I went ahead and got the slides stitched on uh, since Liz was a little too slow for my liking. Uh, so on this strap, this is going to be the waist strap. We're going to make sure and assemble the hardware in the proper order. So before you thread this in back through the slide, you're going to want to go ahead and stick your uh, mm. your swivel snap on there. And then you're gonna go back through the slide. And then right through there. So your assembled waist strap should be, look just like that. So you throw the slide on first. Correct. And then you put on the swivel snap. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on this side, uh, opposite the swivel snap, you're gonna go ahead and stick, run it through your D-ring and stick it down. Let's peel that basting tape. Clayton, if you had to price out this apron, what kind of a price would you be at if we were selling it here? If we, I mean, if someone was selling it at a retail location, um, probably at least 125. It's quite a bit of leather. Yeah, it's quite a bit of leather. They're pretty simple, which is nice, but it is. It's a good amount of material and a little bit of time. And especially if you use solid brass hardware, that can kind of add up a little bit. Um, Correct. We probably have ten dollars in hardware here. I would round about. All right. So I like to stick on my D rings to my straps and go ahead and stitch these first. Okay. Right. Um, and that's because if you if you stitch all your D rings onto the main body of your uh, apron, makes it awkward. You're going to be maneuvering around this whole main body to stitch those on first, and then you're going to try and sew your straps on, and it's going to be super awkward again. Yeah. All right. So we got that, and then we got to go ahead and do the next strap. Okay. So on the next strap, uh, again, we're going to slide a D-ring onto the strap first, and then we're going to weave right back through the slide. All right, so your strap should look like that. And then you can stick your other D-ring on this side. So did somebody around here make my belt? No. However, this is my favorite belt, and I talk <laughs> to Clayton all the time. Um, this is actually, this is a fossil belt. I mean, I don't, it's, it's pretty neat. It's got a whole, there we go, yeah. So it's got all these fun little ovals with like this cross in the middle. 
where then these these pieces are woven through and then they attach to a billet. So this is my favorite belt. I wear it all the time. Clayton knows that he needs to work on some sort of a belt kit so that I can make a black one that will go with my black things because I don't have a neat belt like this for that. Exactly. But. All right, so you want to take a crack at sewing uh, these two yeah. D-rings on? Those just, right there. These just sew onto themselves. And you did two lines? Yep, okay. I did two lines on the slides. Be a lot easier. Can you sharpen those punches with wet and dry sandpaper? Yeah, razor blade says you can sharpen those punches with wet and dry sandpaper around a toothpick. Yeah, no, yeah, and basically make it a tiny little round, fine uh, round, round file uh, to be able to sharpen those. You just want to be careful though, I don't know if you're talking about using a toothpick so that you can get on the inside of them. Typically those punches only have an exterior bevel. That way you don't change the actual diameter of the punch. Heather Hill says, what's the, the name of the leather you're using? I didn't catch it earlier. So this is some of, this is a new leather that we just got in. This is the uh, part of the cowboy line, I guess is what we're calling it. Mm -hmm. The cowboy line, and it is steel is the color. It's got kind of a bluish, quite a bit of green in it. Um, but it's a pretty neat leather and we thought it paired pretty well with a dark brown oil tan. Did we? Well, I thought it did. <laughs> you no, didn't think so at first. It looks good. I was convinced later. <laughs> what are you guys whispering about back there? Well, I had a set of those files back here. I was going to give them to you to so you could show. Oh, yeah. They're getting numbers made for it because we only sell it if you call in from the catalog. They're listed in the catalog and then on retail. So I'm trying to get it on the website. We found out that it wasn't on the website. So there you go. Nice little little preview for you guys. Apparently we're getting some files to help sharpening tools. We've had them. Okay. They just haven't been on the website. All right. So nice. They're in the number order process to get on the website. Well, we'll definitely feature those in another video coming up. Yeah, so are they small round files? Yeah. Let me just go get. Did he have some on like a key ring? I don't know what you're talking about, but cool. <laughs> we'll see what he brings back. I don't think I did quite as good as you, but they're okay. No, they're great. I forgot that when you're doing such a short stitch, you can just, you don't have to back stitch. You can just go all the way one way and then turn around and, and back stitch all the way back. That yep. way you don't have weird back stitches within your one inch material. Very true. What I normally do when I do my belt loops on my knife sheath, I will go all the way across both ways. And then nice and secure. I think that'd be a good kit to make is Liz's belt, so. Yeah. yeah, it's uh we've had some die sets for the uh the kind of piece together chain belts. I forget what they're called, but link yeah. belts? Link, link belts. belts. Oh. I haven't offered those yet, no, not since I've been here at least. They're kind of a seventies thing, but they're fun. Yeah. They're coming back. Love the flower child. It's a it's definitely a good use for some scrap leather. Yeah, for sure. All right, got those done. All right, so guess what's next? I bet I get to sew the other rings onto the body. You got it. So one tab, one D ring is going to be passed through the tab and get sewn onto the body first, right, on its own, because that, that's this is going to be the D ring that the class hooks onto. Uh, okay. Right. So this one shouldn't be too bad. Okay. So depending on which side of the apron you want it to hook on, probably the right side. This side. This side. The right handed people. You can see this I've one. got some indicators there. That should be the top of your tab. Okay. And that then kind of scooch it as close or leave some room. Just a little bit of room. Just probably just enough to where that D ring will rotate freely. You don't want it kind of squashed squashed in there. 
Oh, that's that, good. That'll work. Okay. Put that one on, and then the rest of these, you're gonna pass through the D-ring that's sewn onto your strap and get sandwiched on. So this is gonna go on the other side on your waist. And now I don't know if you want to take some of these to the sewing machine and stick them on right before you sew them. That's probably a good idea. Otherwise, they're probably just going to fall off whenever you're turning it all around. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this little tiny little file set like that. That would be handy. So this would be nice for maybe some of your oblong punches. If you get a, a, a burr on the inside of your punch. Yeah. So is this what we're going to be selling, Tony, I assume? Yeah, it's already, it's um, on retail, and I think you can call in, but there was never really a number that was made for us to be able to sell it on the website. Nice little set. Yeah, nice little set of files. Uh, that would allow you, the small round file might allow you to get inside some of your punches if you get a burr on the inside edge, or just to kind of, you know, get, get the edge back on there. I would just refrain from filing it too much because you're actually going to change the diameter of the punch. If you notice, all these round punches have an exterior bevel and not an interior bevel. Clayton, well, would you sew these with just another two lines or would you try to do it square? That's up to you, Liz. I feel like square would be too. I feel like it would be too. <laughs> <laughs> Guess that answers that question. Yeah, go ahead and do a couple of lines. Should be plenty strong enough to hold it on there. Any more questions, Tony? Salvador asked where the Beretta BB pistol was. <laughs> then he was oh, doing God. a pan pancake holster. I remember it's a Beretta M9 is what we decided. <laughs> right, right. We got some comments afterwards like, okay, enough with what type of gun it is. <laughs> yeah, Denny left that out on his workbench over the over the weekend. You know, oh, he yeah. came back in Wednesday and I think me and Jim were standing there Tuesday and was, what is that? Yeah. You leave that out, somebody's gonna take that. <laughs> and so then we had to, you know, look at it and play with it and right. I shot Jim in the foot. And... <laughs> Did it hurt? No, I, he he played it off pretty well. He was okay. He had a shoe on, you didn't make him take his shoe off? No. Shouldn't <laughs> shoot him in a barefoot. And I promptly put it away before I got in trouble. You can see, kind of see the advantage of using the flatbed machine on this project. If you're using a cylinder arm like the 26 or the class three, it'd be, it'd be a little more difficult to handle all that, you know, all this so soft hand leather, you yeah. know. There you go, Clayton. All right, DC Cooper 001. <laughs> How you doing today, Clayton? Good weekend? You know, it wasn't bad. Finally, the weather's turned around, thank goodness. It was actually pretty nice out this weekend. Yeah. Um, it's going to like rain for the next week, though. We took some nice walks with the dogs this weekend. Got outside. Yeah, I played with the kids. Took my son shopping for his birthday. I think we're getting a bunch of camping supplies. Yeah, about that time of year. Of course, everywhere is like cleaned out of camping supplies and any outdoor equipment right yeah. now. So that's fun. <laughs> All right, Riz, we're getting we're getting requests for you to do an X an X in it. That well, stick could be a bar tack or a square with an X in it. But I can. I could do. You could do it. You can do it. I can do it, but then they won't match, guys. Look! Look what it look what it even shows right here. It does. Yeah. It shows an X. I know, but you try to be so... turning all of this around and around because that's not fun. But you're on live, Liz. We want to see you do it. Listen, you guys. <laughs> Maybe for the top ones, I'll make those fancy because you'll actually really be able to see I mean, them. I try not to be too like, you know, dogmatic about our pattern instructions. But yeah, a, a box with an X in it would be a little bit, a, definitely a stronger stitch than doing two lines. I think this this will suffice for now. Uh, what you really want to avoid is doing too short of a stitch length 
Uh, if you go too short of a stitch length, you'll actually perforate the leather and create a, a kind of a weak point. Yeah, Denny always says a, a perforated tear point. Right. Yeah. Okay. Those are on. Uh, they're on with no X's. Oh, hush. <laughs> All right, I got a question coming here for you, Clayton. Okay, all right. Steve M. In respect to Herman Oak leather sides, is there a marking stamp on the flesh side of the leather indicating that it is Herman Oak? Otherwise, how do you determine that the leather is Herman Oak? So, Herman Oak sides from the tannery, yes, we'll have usually have a Herman Oak stamp on the back of it. Um, a lot of times we split Herman Oak, you know, to thin it down to weight, and in that case, the split will have the stamp on it, but the piece, the top grain piece that you get, uh, obviously won't. We don't necessarily re-stamp it. Um, if you've ever worked with Herman Oak and you know an import badge, it's usually pretty easy to distinguish the difference. David Buswell, and how thick is that leather you're using for the main body? So this is a what did I say? A four to five ounce oil tan. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Four to five ounce oil tan for the main body. Uh, you can we use about the same weight for the pockets, the tabs. The only thing that's a little bit thinner on this is going to be these uh, edge caps on the on the bottom pockets. Awesome. So we're ready to go ahead and stick down this neck strap. And once we sew these, then you're going to have you're going to have a complete apron. It's going to be done. Yep. I'll loosen this up a little bit for you. Okay. Got the pockets coming along. Let me go ahead and hook this up so that it's not just flopping everywhere. Okay. Reach over here. Table's not locked down. Come on. Come on. All right. So let's peel a double-sided tape on these. Pass that through, and so then these are going to be placed at the top. I don't think it really matters which side the slide goes on. Both of these are going to be positioned right here. Yeah. Yep. Did I flip my ring around? I really got four right. of them have the bottom. Yes. And then make sure it's. Yeah, make sure you don't sew it down. Twisted. Twisted. Yeah. Salvador camera. Don't ever say you can't, Liz. You will never grow as a person. Everyone can do it. I mean, it's not like I can't do it. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> Maybe on, on the top there. ones, it'll be better. I'll do it. I'll do it up here. There you go. You'll see them. Uh, Carl Johnson, do you get tags when you buy Herman Oak? Uh, no, usually the Herman, Oak, the Herman Oak isn't tagged. No, but we, we do um, offer them. So if you are buying the Herman Oak, um, we, we give them for free if you'll just let us know that you want them. So if you're placing an online order, you can just add it to that note at the like on your checkout page. It says, hey, can you throw in some Herman Oak tags? Or if you're calling in, um, it is an item number. We can add it to your order and we'll throw in as many tags as you want. Yeah. So, yeah, if any of you that haven't tried Herman Oak before, we're actually running a... a I guess a special or a promotion right now uh, to get Herman Oak in the hands of anybody that, that wants it. So we're actually giving away a free bifold wallet bag, wing, wing dividers, a free bifold wallet bag. Uh, it actually fits many of our interiors, but it's pretty standard size, um, just with uh, any purchase over ten dollars. So you can put in the uh, the code in, in in your cart, right? Uh, yeah, it says do you have a do you have a coupon code? Right when you're in the checkout. On the website. So stick it in the coupon code. It says try Herman Oak, all one word, and uh, you get a free wallet bag. Yeah. And try some Herman Oak. It is only good once, so you can only use it one time. So Salvador asks, how much would you charge for an apron like that one? 
Uh, well, normally, like I said, if you're selling it in a retail setting, I would expect to charge between 125 and 175 for a full leather apron like that. Um, we've done some more simple ones, uh, and it, you know, if you're able, you're able to produce a, a fair quantity of them. You know, usually you can find them for maybe 75 at the lowest with maybe a little bit cheaper hardware, um, a little bit lower priced leather. But I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them around 150, 125. So the hard part here is now you're going to turn and the back of your pressure foot is going to be up on your D-ring. Oh, see guys, what you going to do? Yeah, it's going to jump you forward. So you're going to have one big old long stitch here. Hand roll and then reset. Yeah, usually you can catch it right before it jumps and... We have faith, Liz. Thanks y'all. Got Shiri, I'm guessing. Would you put a finish on that oil tan? If so, what would you use? Uh, no, actually I wouldn't. I'd, I probably wouldn't put a finish on it. Um, the only thing I might do would be saddle soap it. Uh, and saddle soaping really helps, you know, get a little bit of moisture in the leather, condition it a little bit if it needs it, but it'll get rid of any scuffs and scratches on that oil tan surface that happened uh, while you're making it. When you had to manhandle it around your machine, and people right. were like, Fill a box! Whenever you, all the scuffs from stuffing it right through the throat of that class 20. Can you see what you guys made me do? Well... You didn't make me rusty out. <laughs> I said Liz's always getting bullied. I so... She dished it. We all love Liz, but she dishes it out just as well as she can take it. They lie. Whatever. She's just an easy target. <laughs> So a fun little trick once you get used to sewing on your class 20 is actually turning the apron to where you do like that back line right there. Do that in reverse instead of going forward. Oh, aren't you fancy? Yeah. And so you can do the same thing whenever you go to the X's. One side you'll want to do in reverse, the other side you'll want to do going forward. And that'll oh, stay you know from what? having to rotate I super so much. failed on this and they don't line up on the front and the back. Well, That's all right. Finish it, it out. Nobody will know. So what I would normally do here is I would go ahead and go back across your top stitch. Okay. Closest to the D-ring. Okay. Falling back in the same holes and then start from the other side. Do your X and then go across the bottom and come back up. So this will help this will lock your your first line of stitching. So then on this one, you may want to turn it to where you actually stitch in reverse across the square. Like that? Correct. Okay. You gotta believe in yourself, Liz. Yep, and then stitch and go forward right across the bottom. And this will get you just about as close to a symmetrical lock stitch pattern on this box as you can. You'll still have to lock this last stitch. And now you can turn it to go back forward up across the box. How, how much total square foot did we use for this? Uh, so on the pattern it calls for 10 to 11 square feet if you're going to do the entire main body and the straps, tabs, pockets out of the same leather. So this we use around 10 to 11 square feet and the price of this leather is uh, $5.99 a foot. So somebody's asking how, what would the cost of all the leather be? So $5.99 times 10. Yeah, so you're looking at about 60 bucks in leather plus tax, shipping. So yeah, like I said, once you put your labor into it, you're going to want probably at least 125 bucks out of this thing. Would you call it good or would you lock this? Uh, so you're going to want to backstitch a couple or, or overstitch on one of your other lines.
Like I said, I'd... block Every stitches. Support you are, Liz. Yeah. You better appreciate this. <laughs> So this is about as close as you can get to a symmetrical lock stitch on this box. Okay. Woo! Nice. We won't show you the back side. So yeah, keeping your tabs aligned whenever you stick them on is pretty important. You know, it's a little worse. And now just whenever you stick them on, whenever you start walking across it with a sewing machine, uh, a lot of times that bottom piece will get pushed off. The, the double-sided tape doesn't really stick real well with a, a pretty oily or a waxy oil tan leather. Yeah, maybe a little bit. You probably pushed it, though. Uh, so if you're looking for an adhesive, if you don't like double-sided tape, if you have trouble peeling the tape like Liz does, then you might want to look at something like NeoWeld. <laughs> so NeoWeld cement's pretty cool because it, it stays tacky. You're able to re-stick it multiple times if you don't get the positioning right, correct the first time. Uh, stays flexible, doesn't ever cure super hard. Uh, but it actually does a pretty good job at sticking to things like oil tan, uh, some harness leathers I've used it on, and it's really good just for, for getting your piece in place until you stitch it down. Other adhesives I've, adhesives I've recommended for oil tans would be like the Rinia Aqualin 315. Um, we also sell the a Bulldog brand Latex Cement, which works pretty well. The challenging stuff about that though is spreading it on, but making sure it doesn't clump, and then also you only get one chance to stick it. If you peel it back off, you're not gonna be able to stick it again, you gotta reapply. Maybe we need to do a video on all the adhesive. You and Liz can get up there. You did a great job on all the finishes. Maybe we need to have a whole well, adhesives video. Ah, gosh, I guess it's probably been a couple years ago since I did, did an adhesives video. So maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we're due. Time. Some of those we might need a ventilated room in here. <laughs> yeah, we probably should. Yeah, we did have some pretty good feedback from a, from a couple customers. At least I, I got a, couple, a little bit of good feedback on the video we did on finishes. Uh, we definitely had one concerned patron about using uh, quick shine in unventilated areas, and I I definitely agree. I totally agree with him. We should should have been using it in a more ventilated area, either outside or with an exhaust fan. Um, that's that's definitely something that we'll do next time. So I can go backwards here. How's that gonna go when I get up to my D-ring clean? I guess I'll just walk it like I did the other way. Hmm? If I go backwards here. Uh, don't go backwards up towards your D-ring. Anytime you're going towards the D-ring, you're gonna wanna go forwards. Because go the, forwards. yep. It's gonna be easier this way, guys. I think we should just rivet this on. <laughs> just rip it out of there, we're gonna rivet it. <laughs> okay. Now, the more flexible your leather in this situation, the easier it's going to be to handle. Oh, man, I just don't feel like I'm doing anything. I'm standing around. Okay. Hungry. So then we go backwards down this side. Yeah. Okay. Reminds me of like skating. I will say I never did that super well. You don't skate very well? Whoa, it's just fine. Getting like the getting like the leg thingy to like push yourself backwards has always been a bit of a Oh man, we should go to the roller rink sometime. <laughs> I'm great at skating. I'll bring I'll bring the camera off. and a gimbal. Maybe we can you make that a go so you can show off Clayton. Yeah, It'll be SLC yeah, party yeah. at the skating. Yeah, I do. I kind of do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been able to show that off in a while. <laughs> Down at the roller rink. It's like Down at the skate land. Man, the skate land. Woo! 
Caleb is the best. Probably still is. It's gonna bite you. Hey guys, that that wasn't the what is the D lift? Interesting. So one trick somebody told me, uh, I don't know if you want to try it on video right now, but to have more control over your, your pedal on your sewing machine is actually to sew with both feet on the pedal. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, don't drive like that, but sewing would probably be okay. I've seen people drive like that. It scared the Trajesus out of it. <laughs> All right. Scott Perrier, hand sewing those boxes looks way easier. Yeah, no doubt. I think Les would agree with you. I'm all about that, sir. So why are you going backwards towards your D-ring? Well, you know, because it seemed like the easier choice. All right. Which you already told me it was a bad choice, but I made it anyway. Well, sometimes you can pull it off. It's just the heel of your presser foot's quite a bit longer than the nose. And so as you get up to your D-ring, it tends to push off. Yeah, Liz could probably hand sew these faster too. She's pretty quick at it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too shabby at that hand sewing situation. Okay. See now you're pressing foot so never mind. I got nothing. Good thing that pressure foot's skinny. Yeah. Listen guys. Is it as good as it could have been if Clayton sewed it? No. Is it fine? Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. And I'm done. I bet you if we gave away a Liz's apron, nobody's going to turn it down. A Liz crafted apron? A Liz crafted apron. I mean, sure, you can give it away. <laughs> if they turn out anything that we give away, they're like, no, I don't want that. Just kidding. What would you charge for this apron? We're changing our price here. Uh... All right, so what do we? We're we at can just show the five. So we yeah, can you, show the other apron option that comes with the kit. Right. So this is one other apron option. We've got uh, parts cut out for doing a half apron, and really, we'll probably go ahead and, and finish this out since we've got everything cut and everything. Um, so maybe that'll be in a giveaway too. But this is this one's super simple. Really, the only thing here that's a little bit tricky is in the instructions, it calls for the top of the apron to be rolled over an inch and a half and stitched. And that's simply to reinforce the waist part, right? And to make it to where it's not so floppy and it makes it easier to cinch it up tight against your waist. Um, other than that, placing, you know, placing this pocket is super easy with the guide on the, the paper pattern. And then you're stitching the perimeter and dividing the pockets really just as needed. Uh, these aprons are best if you can make them specific to the tools they're going to carry. Um, and then the straps attach the same way. It's just a waist strap. It goes right around and the tabs go right on the sides. Stitch it down, rivet it down. Uh, this would also be a really easy riveted construction project. Yeah. If you don't want to do any hand sewing or don't have a sewing machine. You would still probably want to rivet or like sew down the bottom of the pockets at least, right? Right. Or use multiple rivets. Or just rivet a lot. And just do a lot of rivets. Look at that. I made nice. a thing. I'd say you're probably more of a small. <laughs> Maybe. I got room to grow. <laughs> right. So yeah, any other questions? Larry Schmidt, it is an apron, not a harness bag. No, uh, it's an air maze bag. Air maze bag. Did we think that it was? Were we confused? There's been some talk in the Thank chat you. that you guys haven't seen. Talking about. Oh. I think Larry's defending you. Gotcha. I think Salvador was talking about he was going to go do some classes or going to be working with her maze for a little bit. So. Nice. We're gonna pick his brain of how they're doing some nice. Very Maybe nice. they'll do an apron video for her. There you go. Great. And we will do a Hermes apron. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got some French craft that roll here that could could probably pawn off as a Hermes. That's true. Apron. That's true. That'd be gorgeous. Here we go. Well, guys, we got it. We got her all done. Looks good. Everything's good. It is a little long, but that's fine. It's fine. It'll be for one of y'all. <laughs> Okay. Well, no more questions. I think you're good. good. Okay. On your lunch. Um, Friday, Denny and I will be restoring some of Kevin's old, um, like satchel bags and stuff that he's had around. It's probably fit him. Probably my size. Yeah. Yeah. And so join us Friday at eleven, and um, we'll just be hanging out with you guys, just restoring some old products. So we'll see you then. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good one.